Okay, let's talk about this crazy oil pump that has given me so much trouble. This is the oil pump for that DT-466. And when we flip this over, that's your gears inside. Right there. And you can see how these are really scratched up here. Okay, and then also on the wear plate that goes against, it's really grooved in here too. I don't know how well that shows up on camera, but if you listen, you can hear how my fingernail scratches over top of those. Like these are pretty good grooves in there. So when I first took this engine apart, I looked at the oil pump and I said, okay, we need a new oil pump. So I ordered a new oil pump, but I never opened the box. Now when it's time to reassemble the engine, that oil pump goes on the front cover, so it's one of the last things that you put on. And don't you know it, I opened the box and we have the wrong oil pump. So I sent it back and I reordered, but now this project is on hold because I'm waiting for an oil pump. I mean, everything else is finished, right? The next new oil pump comes and it's wrong as well. So there are three different oil pumps for these engines. There's the old mechanical one, there's the 466E one, which is what this is, and then there's the Max Force one. And none of those fit the 466E except the 466E pump. They're all different pumps. So that second one I got was wrong as well. Well, then they said, well, we can't get an oil pump. And this is talking to Maxim um, International. And I said, well, you can buy reman engines for the 466E. How can you not get me an oil pump for it? Like, where are you guys getting your oil pumps for for your reman engines? Well, they couldn't answer that question. They didn't know. Maybe they don't come with an oil pump even anymore. I don't know. But according to International, you cannot buy that pump. There are aftermarket uh, companies that make them, but we can't find any stock on them either. So I'm just totally stuck. You go find yourself a used oil pump somewhere and it's probably going to look just like that. And plus, on an expensive brand new engine rebuild, you don't want to put a used oil pump on anyway. So I ordered an oil pump rebuild kit for it. And according to International, I got the last one in North America. I don't understand how an engine that's only 20 years old, you can't buy parts like oil pumps anymore. But anyway... I got my gears, but my gears don't come with the wear plate. So that brings up some questions. I can put those new gears in there, and that'll get rid of the scoring here. But why is that such a big deal anyway? Well, when this thing pumps oil, that oil gets pulled in on one side of the G-rotor, and as that thing spins around, it squashes it out the other side. And the only seal between the top side of the gear and the bottom side of the gear is this wear plate sitting on top like that and the actual oil pump housing. So if you have these grooves like this, what winds up happening is you're bypassing oil. Like let's say you're pulling oil in this port, that's the seal between the low pressure and the high pressure. And so as it's pumping through, you wind up losing a lot of oil pressure through the uh, these grooves right back to return. So if I put this thing together, just exactly the way it is. Will it work? Yes. It will work and it will probably work fine. But again, I got to say, when you're spending thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars rebuilding these engines, do you do you want to put a junk oil pump back in it that just works? Well, I don't. I don't do things that way. So anyway, this wear plate. I cannot buy that wear plate. There is a part number from International for it, but there's no stock. There is a PAI number for it, but PAI has no stock. Like, I, I can't find this plate anywhere. I've searched high and low. I've, I've checked probably 20 different places. Certain places online say that they have it, but they don't actually have stock when you phone to order it. Anyway, another question. Why is this grooved out like that? Well, because if you look at this housing, actually, let me get these gears out of here. This housing is like perfect. There's no grooves in it. Little tiny bit of wear, but basically no grooves. We got one tiny little line here that you can barely feel with your fingernail. Other than that, it's perfect. So why did this side wear so much? Well, I have a theory about that. I don't know if I have any pictures of this oil pump when I was taking it apart, but this thing was completely siliconed on, siliconed in place. And what happened was a lot of that silicone around the outside seals got to the inside and that hole right there was plugged with silicone. And I believe that is exactly the lube hole that lubes this part of the pump. And I think that's why it ate this out here. I think it wasn't getting lubed because that was silicone. 
brings me to the next question. Why was that silicone? Well, it was silicone because that oil pump was leaking profusely, and it didn't matter what they did, new seals, everything, whatever, it always was leaking, and that was one of the things that they wanted fixed. Well, pay attention. If we flip that plate over, right here is where your, it seals against the cover, against the front cover. Okay, so back here, there's a seal, a rubber seal that goes in here. So one side of that seal seals into that groove, and the other side of that seal seals against this uh, side of the plate here. Now, if we go back to this side, we talked about putting this on, because I can't buy this plate and I can't get an oil pump, we talked about putting this on a belt sander and smoothing it out to at least take the high spots off of here and make it as good as we could. Now, it would thin the plate out a little bit, but at least we'd have something that worked. Well, here's the problem with that. If we look back at this side again, right there is where that seal rides. And again, I don't know how well that turns up on camera, but this is a super deep groove wore into here. With the caliper, it measures 16 thousandths of an inch in the deepest spot. That's why this wouldn't seal. This oil pump would not seal because this plate is just completely wore out where the seal sits here. I don't know if these bolts were loose and allowed it to move and that's why it wore or what, but it's from here to here. This section here is all wore out. That seal wore really far in there, so this plate is just junk. That's all there is to it. By the time we smooth out this side enough to get that out of there and smooth out this side enough to get that out of there, we're going to have a piece of paper. So that's just not going to work. All right, so what we wound up doing was we took it into the metal machine shop. And where's our mark here? Somewhere. Just a minute, I'll find it. Yeah, right there. Right there, there's a tiny little divot, and that is from the hardness machine. They checked the hardness of this plate. And as much as you would think that this would be stainless steel or some kind of tempered hardened steel of some sort, it's not. It's soft like butter, they said, just mild steel. So we had them draft up a new plate and laser it out. And so now we have a brand new plate complete with the oil lube hole and all that stuff. I don't know what this costed. Uh, the customer took care of this and it, well I sent it in and got him to make it up but the customer picked it up and paid for it all that so I don't know what it costed to get this done but at least now we have a brand new plate that's the right thickness and we can put this new oil pump back together with new gears and have a proper oil pump on this machine but this whole process d working through all of this delayed that motor almost a month just finding parts and waiting for them to come in and they're wrong and sending them back and get another one, wait a while, that one's wrong, send it back, get a rebuild kit, it doesn't come with a plate, fooling around with getting this all made, trying to find plates somewhere. Like almost four weeks this put me behind. Now my customer is not pleased but he's been good to work with but it's just, and I get it from his end too, like it does not take this long to rebuild an engine. But when you have those kind of troubles that's what happens. It, it just drags on and on and on. And I've been finding ever since the great Chinese sneeze came through, it's just like this over and over and over. It's, I got another one on this one that's going to be coming up. Uh, the number two liner in this one. I, I won't even get into it right now, but this is another whole fiasco on this 855 engine for that Steiger. And, I, and you want to talk about delays. That Steiger was in the shop before that engine came out, like a month before this one showed up. But because I was waiting on stuff for this one, I had to get started on this one, and then this one gets delayed, and these guys are renting a truck while I'm trying to get this engine ready. It's just a, oh. They don't make it easy for us anymore, guys. It's just getting harder and harder and harder. I have never had so much trouble on engine rebuilds as what this thing has been. Oh, I've had issues here and there, but not like this. Anyway, I'm really pressed for time, so I'm probably not going to do too much videoing here, but it's just I'm going to assemble the oil pump and bolt it on the engine. And then I got a couple of hoses to put back on there. I got a power steering hose that goes here that I got a new one for them. And a couple other things, this one here and stuff like that, that have to get bolted on. But I mean, other than that, this engine is complete. I just need to get that oil pump bolted on, and then uh, we'll get this thing loaded up and sent back to the customer's place there. And... They were wondering if I would help them install it in the truck, and I said, no way, because that tractor is supposed to have an engine in it, which looks like that right now, and that tractor is supposed to be planting right now. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. 
cutting to the quick here. First you put your new front cover seal on. Then you're going to put your wear plate on, like so. And we're going to get a little bit of oil on our splines. And then I just ran a bunch of grease all the way around that wear plate where the oil pump gears are going to be making contact in there so that when we are starting to crank this, there's no risk of uh, scarring this up or anything like that, doing any damage to that new wear plate. And I just got a new bucket of this driven assembly grease. So that's what I used for that. The old oil pump gear has a dead spline right there, the inner drive, but it does not have any markings indicating direction or anything like that. The new one has a dead spline as well, but it also has that little divot there to usually marks your, in, indicates which way the gear is supposed to sit. But the outer one does not have that mark. There's nothing there. The book doesn't say which way it has to or is not supposed to go, so I'm going to put my divot facing out because in my experience, usually when you see that divot, if it's not a timing mark, it indicates that that is supposed to be in the up or the outer position, however you're assembling your pump. So the book says to assemble it this way, putting your gear on like so, so I'm going to have that divot facing up or outward just like we normally would. And then while it's on there, we're going to get this guy all greased up as well so that we can't damage these lobes when we start cranking this thing before there's ever any oil pressure in anywhere. Another reason why I like to use grease on the oil pump is because the grease is very thick and it helps seal it up on all of the sealing surfaces everywhere and it really sucks the oil up quick if you can draw a super hard good vacuum and grease just really seals it and, and helps that happen. So that's why I like to use grease for that. And we'll drop our drive key into place here for the dampener. And of course we have to press our new seal into the housing. It's got Loctite on the outside, this one, so don't have to use any retainer. Just press it in there. Lube up the inside with some grease. And we can take our new drive gear and drop him in. Not drive gear, <laughs> the inside is the drive. And we'll give some grease in between all these lobes too. And a little schmear on top. This top side is gonna go against the wear plate that we already greased, but we'll add a little more anyway. Of course, we'll pop our new seal in there and now we're ready to install the oil pump housing. I just thought of something that I probably should mention because some people look these videos up for how-tos and to know how to orient certain pieces and stuff like that. So there's actually a spring washer that goes in there. It looks like this and you can see that it's beveled. So the way they want that is you can see how the inside is sort of beveled in and the outside is beveled out. They want the outer bevel facing out. So that means that inside, I don't know how to say this, the inside bevel goes that way so that the outside part of it sticks out more this way. Hope that makes sense. All right, got the oil pump torqued up, 18 foot-pounds, got the new seal in there. I got my new sleeve on this uh, hub for the front and a little bit of oil on there. So now I can press that thing back into place. Okay, we got that hub pressed back on there with the new seal and everything. New retain uh, retainer, new, uh, oh, what's that thing called? Wear sleeve, new wear sleeve on it. Have these guys torqued, now i got to put that dampener pulley back on. There it is, 40 foot-pounds on these guys. This dampener is actually keyed to that hub with that pin right there. So it only fits one way and that's what times it to the crank. So 40 foot-pounds on there, use a little Loctite. It's keyed, that's very simple, or pinned, whatever you want to say, timed. So that's done. This oil pump fiasco is finally finished. Now I'm sure you saw that little piece of pipe that was laying on the floor on top of this guy. Yeah, that's what I think about that. Anyway, that pipe was this right here. And that is for an exhaust back pressure sensor. So I made sure that it was all nice and cleaned out. I actually ran up to the ultrasonic cleaner to get all the soot out of there. So we don't have to deal with any of that stuff. And make sure that, that sensor is going to work when this thing actually gets run. So got that on there. I had to change this fitting, which is why the line wasn't on. I had to get a new fitting and that fitting was in. And that's just a JIC pipe thread but anyway it was all messed up the threads were wrecked so that's done 
And now I was just working on getting it finished the rest of the way, getting the braking oil in there. I use the 1030 John Deere braking oil quite a bit. I'm not a big fan of John Deere oil in general, but I do like their braking oil. It's not like stupid expensive. It's readily available and it does work good. So I use that in pretty much every engine I rebuild. I use their braking oil. So it's working on overfilling it at this point because once you get to cranking and get all those oil galleries all full of oil, and you get the oil rail up top, remember that big rail up here? Once that thing gets all full of oil and all the pump and the tubes and everything, we're gonna drop the oil level quite a bit. So I always overfill them a fair bit because by the time you're done cranking, a lot of that oil just disappears into all the oil galleries and everywhere. So, so that's where that's at. Well, there we go. This one is finally complete. Got all the little things done, hoses tied up, I made new hoses for the top because the old ones were had all kinds of nicks and rubs in them and the ends had been cut off and it looked like they'd been stretched like they were too short now and stuff so I just made new hoses. This new air or uh, coolant line here also for the air compressor and new power steering hose because even with the clamp on here it was still all loose on that fitting so we don't want to be sucking, sucking a bunch of air into the power steering pump the reservoir would go right there anyway got all these little things done and now this thing is ready to load back up and go home I don't have an oil filter yet they were supposed to bring me one but they never did so I don't have that on there and I also didn't have a starter so I couldn't crank it over and bleed the oil uh, galleries and everything like that like I usually do but that's okay They'll just have to do that on their end, and hopefully we don't run into any unforeseen issues with that end of it. So at this point, I'm going to go find Forky. i got to move this guy out of the way so I have access to that one, and then I'll get that one loaded in the truck and get it home. Well, there we go. Finally got this beast finished. Now I'm sending them back home to go back in the truck that it came out of. I got one bolt missing here because the case is broken right there, and I didn't have an easy way to fix that, so this wire is pretty stiff. It's going to have to be good enough, I guess. But that completes the DT-466E overhaul. Looks pretty good. Oh, we had a lot of issues to sort through on this motor. But it's very satisfying to see it loaded up and ready to go home. Looking forward to hearing it run sometime. Hopefully it runs as good as it looks. Really do appreciate all of you that followed along on this series and watched this. Hopefully it was helpful to somebody. And uh, as always, really appreciate you watching. And I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>